Okay, hi there. In this uh, third video in this playlist, we're going to explore some of the factors that can cause a shift in the position of the aggregate demand curve. Now, a really key exam point is that changes or shifts in the AD curve will be caused by factors independent of changes in the general price level. You see, if the GPL goes up or down, that causes a movement along the demand curve. It doesn't cause a shift. So our focus in this video will be thinking about some of the factors that cause the curve to shift itself, either an increase or a decrease in AD, but it's not caused by changes in the general price level, a key exam point to be aware of. So here we see an outward shift in the aggregate demand curve from AD1 to AD2. There's been an increase in aggregate demand, and this means there's a higher level, increased level of demand for goods and services at each general price level. You can see here at GPL1, demand's gone up from Y1 to Y4. So something must be happening in the economy, in the macro economy, which is lifting, increasing total demand for goods and services. One or more of the components of demand, C plus I plus G plus X minus M, one, of the, one or more of those components must have changed to bring about a shift in the demand curve. And they will have been caused by particular factors. Equally, there could also be uh, an inward shift in AD. AD1 to AD3 is described as an inward shift of demand. What that means is, that there has been a fall in the level of goods and services bought at each general price level. AD1 has shifted to AD3. So what are the main causes of shifts in the level of AD, the position of the aggregate demand curve? Now, there are many, many potential factors. We're just going to isolate and talk about a few of them that will get you through good exam questions. Here are six. Uh, the key point is mentioned at the bottom, actually, that shifts in AD have both domestic or internal and external causes. So some of these factors include changes in real incomes and employment. How much money do people have to spend? Uh, and also how many people actually have a job that pays a regular income? The government can impact aggregate demand directly through its own spending and how much it chooses to borrow, but also by the level of taxes both direct and indirect, that they impose on households and businesses. So government spending, and taxation and borrowing, otherwise known as fiscal policy, can have quite a sizable impact on aggregate demand. Central banks, commercial banks, can also impact on demand. So changes in interest rates, for example, changes in the availability and supply of credit, as well as the cost of credit, can impact on the willingness and ability of people to, to borrow money and businesses to, uh, to finance investment. As we'll see later on, the exchange rates can play a big part in impacting aggregate demand, particularly for countries for whom trade is a significant, sizable percentage of their GDP. So changes in the external value of the country's exchange rate. The growth, the GDP, the AD of a country is also affected by how fast other countries are growing, particularly uh, the circular flows and the growth rates of our major trading partners. So a recession, for example, in a country like the United States or Germany uh, can have an impact on the UK economy. And we'll also find out that fluctuations, changes in business and consumer confidence and sentiment can also have quite a powerful effect on aggregate demand. Here are two topical examples. A big discussion at the moment in the UK about government financial support for businesses during the pandemic and the extent to which a second COVID wave in the autumn of 2020 is perhaps going to take the economy back into recession and bring aggregate demand down again. And uh, the question, of course, is should the government be providing more financial support, an extension of furlough schemes and other, other incentives to try to support aggregate demand? Another debate at the moment, you'll be able to read up on this, and we have a separate video on this on the YouTube channel, is the question of whether the central bank, in this case the Bank of England, should they move to negative interest rates as a way of trying to stimulate aggregate demand 
for goods and services. So those are two topical issues you might want to read up on. One of the factors that does cause aggregate demand to change uh, is one or more external shocks to an external system, to an, an internal system. So external shocks are events, economic events, that come from outside, beyond a domestic economy uh, and have an impact on our daily lives. So obviously the COVID-19 pandemic has created one of the biggest shocks to affect the whole global economy. And every country is exposed to some degree to an external economic shock. Some brilliant analysis published by VoxEU.org. Some economists have been doing some great research on the shock impact of the pandemic. Uh, they've said it's a global shock like no other. Simultaneous disruption to both supply and demand in an interconnected world economy. And down at the bottom there, they, they reference something specific to aggregate demand. Layoffs, the loss of income from morbidity, quarantines and unemployment and worsened economic prospects have reduced household spending and firms investment, suggesting, implying that the COVID-19 pandemic has exerted a severe negative shock to aggregate demand. They produce this rather interesting chart. The blue line here shows the measure of volatility, global economic volatility. The red line shows the rate of growth of the world economy, GDP growth for the world, coming down from less than 3%. And in fact, the world economy in recession, uh, sharp drop there in the red line in the second quarter of 2020. So external shocks can have quite a big impact on the level of aggregate demand. In the next video in this playlist, we're going to take you through three examples of how to build simple chains of reasoning in an exam context to help you explain changes in AD.